Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Fighting Roundtable. I am Dante Analysis, and here with me is a new guest. It is the brothers from the Sibling Rivalry podcast. Uh, nice to meet you both. Uh, please introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Brennan. I'm Nick. Yeah, we do the Sibling Rivalry MMA podcast. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for being here. So, yeah, um, uh, today I want to talk about um, unspoken rules and the gentleman's code, quote unquote, uh, in the fighting world. And I want to expand a bit on um, what it is, how it came to be, and and why is it in uh, in the in the fighting world, in our culture, and its practice amongst fighters uh, while, while they're fighting uh, to this day, and just to uh, just to understand it. So, uh, so I think it'll be a uh, quite a interesting. Uh, conversation so yeah I, yeah oh sorry go ahead. no nothing <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah so uh, to start with uh i want to use a more recent example with uh israel adesanya versus yoel romero uh people were back and forth on whether the fight was good or not they were talking about Israel as a champion should engage. And this was kind of like an un unspoken rule as a, as a champion. You have to, you're held to this standard standard of how you're supposed to, uh, to apply yourself when you're defending your belt, when you're fighting. And they're a little bit on Yoel Romero because as the challenger, it's implied like maybe it's coming from movies or whatever, which we'll discuss, but it's implied that he should be the, the hungry person of the two and should be going out and getting, uh, going after it, uh, as opposed to his strategy where he was awaiting and, uh, for Israel to engage, but being that they're both, uh, counter punchers, I think this is, uh, what led to this kind of matchup, but I want to know what, um, you guys think. Yeah, no, that, that fight was pretty horrible. Um, uh, neither of them really did much. If I was going to, say which one of them really should have done more like who, who if i had to blame one of them uh i mean i think romero it's more on him to be trying to be the one to go out there and make something happen uh he was getting out pointed with those leg kicks and um he, he should know that he was losing the fight uh losing those rounds mm -hmm. and he should have been trying to make something happen that's who I think it would go on if, if uh, you're going to say it's an unspoken rule. I would say the challenger really has to go out there and make a point. What do you think? I don't think – I think – I mean, when it's a title fight, you kind of have to throw – entertain the crowd out the window and do what you think you need to do when, to win the fight. Um, and I agree. I think Romero needed to be the guy pushing um, because, one, he's probably not going to outstrike out Asanya if they're not creating flurries, which neither of them attempted to. So he's going to get outpointed by out Asanya. And two, he has the much better wrestling, much better clinch, and didn't utilize it at all. So he just stood there in a contest and took leg kicks. Like, Adesanya is winning that fight, so Romero needs to push. But when it comes to champion and challenger, I hate that rule, you know, mm -hmm. um, that the challenger has to legitimately take the belt. Like, whoever wins the fight, I think, should win the fight like anything else. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it appears like that, that rule is true, you know. Like, the judges really are scoring it like that as much as I hate it. It seems like the challenger is always the one getting screwed and never the champion. So, I mean, I guess the unspoken rule is that the challenger has to, you know, push the pace and really go take the belt. Um, but I hate that rule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just want, yeah, it, uh, looking at it like from, um, from fighting history, yeah, I think it's just a, a precedent set in history where, if you're going to challenge the top dog, it's something that you have to to bring. Yeah, you have to be the hungrier person. Whether uh, whether it's just naturally that way, because if you're just clawing on the way up, you felt that hunger, and that's what uh, you carry into into uh, the championship match, and that's why it, it's placed as the standard. Whether uh, we see it in movies or we just see it in uh, in real life in uh, in classic sports. Yeah, I think that's it's most likely where um, that kind of uh, feeling comes from. That, uh, yeah, that behavior is expected of a challenger. And as for the mm -hmm. champion, we see it. Uh, we see them revered as this final boss that um, has seen it all and is no and knows it all. Which is why um, they're not really expected. They're expected um, to a certain extent to give a performance, but they're 
not really seem to be uh to be expected to be as hungry as the challenger mm. yeah i don't know i was just i was just confused uh, at the end of that fight like everybody was booing adesanya and then they were still cheering for romero i didn't get that <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, they could have booed them both. Or yeah, booed them both. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's it was what horrible. Them both, right. Yeah, I think. Oh yeah, I think it was most. It was most likely because Israel was beefing up this, uh, beefing up the marketing by saying him. He's. I'm gonna face him like no one else faced him. I'm going to um, uh, to knock yeah. him out. I think that was probably where the frustration came from. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's it's kind of the things you gotta give and take. Yeah, sometimes you say a lot of things in uh, marketing that you, you sometimes don't uh, bring it in um, the real fight. Uh, see uh, Francis Ngannou versus Derek Lewis, but yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things that sometimes you just can't help. There's yeah, there's always um, those things that you don't expect to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, and then I want to probably see if it's if it broadens it. Uh, from just uh, the fighting world, yeah, we uh, we see it um bring it into uh, to the fans to uh, to uh, movie sets, and we see it uh like people having uh, these ground rules uh, ahead of fighting. Oh no, uh, before they fight, uh, and it's uh, most likely brought from their own culture. You see that okay, we won't do any kicks, we won't uh, slap or or bite or anything. And you can see this in uh, brawls in in schools when uh, when little boys or just students in general fight, they agree to these rules that if you fight this way, you're not really seen as like as you're kind of like an outlier or an outsider in uh, in a group or in in the school. So maybe so we can see how in the fighting world that branches off into. Uh, into I guess non-fighter world. So, uh, have you seen any kind of things um, while growing up, or see things now where there's a there's like a, a ground set of rules um, for like scuffles or any or even plate fighting? <laughs> so you mean just like outside of MMA, just like in in the real world? Yeah, because uh, yeah, sometimes it spills over. Just like in people don't consider kicking to be real fighting. They kind of. Uh, frowned upon that because people grew, uh, grew up on boxing and that's where they get their idea of, of fighting from before MMA came around. Yeah, I don't know. Those people might get beat up. If I mean, <laughs> you don't just get to make up rules, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, obviously, we're brothers, so we grew up fighting each other. And we, we never said it, but we never punched each other in the face. Right. <laughs> um, mostly just body. Uh, I don't know. There's definitely, like, and like we grew up wrestling too, so it seems like other people, if there was like a fight, they definitely uh, frowned upon wrestling because they didn't want to get taken down to the ground. Right. <laughs> <and> <laughs> help beat up. Uh, I mean, that's like I don't know. You see like people in like video street fighting too, and somebody will take them to the ground. Everybody's like, "Oh, good, little, let them up, pussy." Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, and you see that uh, in the UFC too. I think that's where. It, yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, it. good point. Yeah, Nate Diaz pissed. Mm-hmm. Nick Diaz. Man, just kick me in the leg, take me down, homie, man. That ain't a fair fight at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, even like, I guess, I don't know, like high school, like sometimes people would like just have fights for fun. Yeah. I think the people that make those the rules, wrestling part. <laughs> the people that make those rules are the people that don't know how to do it. Like, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like nobody in a street fight's going to be like, that knows how to throw a kick's going to be like, no kicking. Like, you can't kick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't throw kicks because they don't know how to. Or like, Nobody that knows how to wrestle in a street fight. I'm like, all right, no takedowns. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. it is like that in MMA. Like, Jackson complaining all the time about getting taken down and laid on. Like, then freaking learn how to stop it and exactly. get up. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, if I was ever actually like about to get in like a real fight with somebody and they said no wrestling to me, that's I'm definitely be like, okay, I'm taking this guy down. Yeah. Because <laughs> obviously he can't stop it if he's mm-hmm. telling me there's no wrestling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, and that, yeah, it reminds me of Chael Sonnen versus Rampage during the heavyweight tournament, where yeah, yeah Rampage was uh, pointing on the uh, on the floor to meet him there, and Chael Sonnen, Chael Sonnen uh, didn't want to entertain him. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. wouldn't either. Yeah, there's like a yeah, like a no, nah, I wouldn't say a culture shock, but yeah, there's a bit of culture dif- differences of where they're coming from, where what uh, <laughs> rules of engagement are appropriate. 
Yeah, Chell said, how about no boxing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hmm, that, yeah, that's really interesting. And uh, it was, and that's kind of like the opposite with uh, Holloway and Llamas. Yeah, even though they're from they have a different cult, uh, different cultures, there's some things that uh, that cross over, and that's uh, and that uh, and that's where you see people that really uh, accept uh, the rules of engagement during the fight, and then in those last few seconds, they just stand and bang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's always fun to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. It'd, be, it'd also be kind of funny to see somebody <laughs> all the way point to the ground and that dude just blast double him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that reminds me of, uh, did you remember that highlight where I think it was a, a Bellator fighter's oh, debut? Um, instead of touching gloves, it's like an unspoken rule where um, it's like a tradition where you touch gloves you know, just to show uh, uh, an era of sp a sportsmanship. Yeah, an, uh, an essence of sportsmanship. One guy denied, not only did he deny the uh, touch of hands uh, when the round started, he did an Iminari roll and did a heel hook to get a submission. I think he finished oh him in like God. 13 seconds. I can't remember uh, the person's name. I remember that. So, so wait, did he, um, did he like fake a glove touch and then go to that? Or did he just say no glove touch and then went? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. He just went. Yeah, he just did, yeah, he, just, he just went straight down and just uh, didn't even uh, and didn't even want to do the d glove touch and just went in Minari roll. I'm okay with, if you don't want to touch gloves, don't touch gloves. But well, the other guy was doing it. Yeah, the um, other guy was touching gloves, about to touch well, gloves. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There. I think the other guy should have like shook his head and been like, "No, I'm not touching your glove," and then go for it. I don't have a problem with that. But if he, but yeah, if that dude had his hand up in there and he went for it, that's kind of messed up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah, that's their that um, yeah, it was the fastest submission in a Bellator history. I'm just seeing it now. <laughs> it was let's see, Gozali. Yeah, he, he once he went, he just dove right in. He just didn't uh, regard him at all. So yeah, there's um that unspoken rule where it may not be uh, entertained. And seeing that it was the fastest submission in Bellator history, it might give you a complex of. Or might not, but it might give a complex of whether or not uh, it's even wise to, I guess, let your guard down enough to actually do the touch gloves in the first place. Well, touching gloves is cool. I mean, but yeah, yeah be ready if the guy's going to be an asshole. I mean, that's like uh, that famous video of Floyd Mayweather. I don't know, who was it that he knocked out? Ortiz. Ortiz, That was yeah. different, though. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it was legal. Yeah, well, that guy also headbutted him, and then the ref was like, stopping it and he just knocked him out yeah but everybody's complaining about that too it's like well i thought that was fine it's uh, yeah it's like if the green light's on you gotta be ready i guess but <laughs> it did look like it was yeah he definitely wasn't ready did you see that video going around it's been going around the last two weeks of these girls in the yeah, ufc yeah that's what i was gonna uh which was the other, like, in Bellator? no it was in the ufc i don't know who they were i mean i might know who they were but i don't remember and they, one of them went to touch gloves, and the other like threw a sidekick and pushed her back. And then the girl started chasing her, and the other girl knocked her out. The girl that was being disrespected got knocked out in like ten seconds. Uh, well, I think the girl even like faked to do a glove touch and then kicked her. Too. Yeah, and then she got knocked out with That's the next horrible. punch. It was great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she got mm, what she did. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I might. Yeah, I think I might know what uh, who you're referring to. Wait, was a Lipsky? Uh, Ariane Lipsky? I have no, I have no clue. Lie. It's just been going around Twitter lately. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember it happening, but oh yeah, yeah, I distinctly remember. Yeah, I I vaguely remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, but at any rate, yeah, it's like things like that, and it makes me wonder, uh, why the the rules are what they are. The uni the United of uh, MMA rules. Yeah, I think it's set with a certain mindset that. Yeah, not everyone may follow um, the same rules, which is why they say protect yourself at all times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, outside of uh, whatever unwritten rules you may have for that a particular city that you're fighting in or a particular uh, two fighters that came from uh, uh, different cultures, different people. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's why they uh, have the the MMA rules uh, the way they the way they do. So that's um, I think that's where I guess the conflict comes from. Whether the MMA rules are too are too soft, or who's to say that it's 
it's not the most fair because everyone has um, a different uh, fighting style. But then again, it may uh, the culture uh, may f influence how the rules are uh, interpreted, or uh, if uh, certain uh, parts of the rule set of uh, could be uh, changed to fit the the culture of today. I I don't think anything needs to be changed. It's like it's kind of like uh, like I said, we grew up wrestling, and mm -hmm. we're always taught like don't stop wrestling until the ref is like literally like touching you telling you you have to stop like because mm -hmm. you could hear a whistle from somewhere else and think that's it and you're supposed to go or stop it's just like you don't stop until you know for sure that you're being told to stop right like, oh. um that's i don't know that's just kind of how we grew up with it so i think it's the same for fighting i don't see how it's any different you agree yeah, yeah. oh definitely. oh you hear uh, them oh you're good um because it's like uh, another example, I think it's a pretty good one, uh, Michael Bisping and Anderson Silva. Mm. Uh, if you remember that, Bisping's yeah. mouthpiece came out, yeah. and he was pointing to the ground, but the ref hadn't stopped it yet, and that's when Silva threw that knee and knocked him out. Mm -hmm. uh, they got to keep fighting, but... There's also guys like Cosmo Pajaris who, even if the ref is trying to pull you off, doesn't give a fuck. See, yeah, and that's, <laughs> and that's different so. with submissions, too. Yeah. Like, that guy's, yeah. like, breaking people in half. Just be an asshole. Well, That's there's been times in the UFC though where guys have tapped out and the guys stop, and then the guy that tapped out's like, "Oh wait, no, I didn't." He just keeps fighting. Yeah, uh -huh. Kevin Lee just stole that shit, didn't he? Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you mean. Now, oh yeah, and to yeah, to as an addendum to that, the oh, I forgot the example. Uh, yeah, there was um some something like that where. Yeah, there was like a, there's a bit of a miscommunication, and that could uh, be a fact that one uh, applies to a certain uh, unwritten rule, and the other one doesn't. Uh, I forgot when, where it came from. Yeah, when. Yeah, when the yeah when he didn't. Uh, yeah, when he didn't register that, uh, Bisping uh, had his mouthpiece off. But then well, again, the that was solar was registered it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so I knew exactly what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to remember the uh, the uh, like a good a good example of that or uh, the big um, bigger scope of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. When someone is blindsided by that, I, yeah. You mean like where it goes the other way? Like somebody gets poked in the eye and they try to like walk away and wave it off, and the guy doesn't go fight him, and then the ref steps in. Or... Yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, basically, when. <clears throat> yeah yes when someone shows restraint yeah when yes uh and this is like expected yeah, of people cool. who are black belt levels yeah when yeah but when someone says like he's a six degree black belt and this was like controversial in the in bjj community when mma was really young there were some people that held the submission too late and there was others work that cranked it too hard even in practice and uh and so forth but when you see it in in the fights there were times when someone tapped uh, tapped and like two or three seconds later that that's when the person decided to uh, hang on there was a person who did this notoriously and that's it was uh, it was paul harris ah there we go and yeah and there that's where um it came from uh yeah and that's when they bring the the street rules quote unquote into into mma so people like nate, uh, nate diaz and uh, people like that where um they bring this kind of air around them where it's a dog fight and it has to be um, treated like a dog fight, whether it's in uh, a, in a cage or not. And that's where you see um, these, <laughs> these rule conflicts uh, happen. Uh, and same thing with Connor. I think I don't, I guess Irish streets, but yeah, you see him like playing with the rules a, a little bit by kneeing uh, Habib when he was facing him. Yeah. You see the, yeah, there's, yeah, there's like a little bit of bumping heads when it comes to someone who's like a pure sportsman versus someone who has that street rule swagger. Mm. Yeah, I mean you gotta, I mean you gotta follow the rules or if you don't want to get points taken away and end up losing the fight. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah, but oh yeah, but yeah, I understand. And but I wonder if that uh, kind of feeling won't go away when uh, there's there's a great demand for people who have that kind of air amongst um um air around them people like masvidal diaz uh ferguson in some uh, respects uh and maybe chael sonnen yeah i mean he at least that's his character but uh yeah and that brings uh that brings back to my point of like 
MM, the MMA universe, the audience, uh, influencing them, the rules a bit, and the way they influence uh, the referees. Because uh, t uh, Mark Goddard, he's a notorious of being influenced by audience booing because they have like an uh, unspoken rule of how uh, things should uh, uh, things should be because the audience likes striking. Uh, th uh, there's only like some countries like in Asian countries, uh, Japan, uh, Japan and uh, Korea, where uh, one championship uh, fights are fought, where people mm -hmm. really appreciate the grappling aspect and they cheer for it. Just like um, they did with um, uh, Demetrius Johnson uh, when he was going through that uh, the flyweight tournament or was it the strawweight tournament? Oh, no, no, not straw, not, uh, strawweight, flyweight. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, yeah, uh, you see uh, the conflict where um, a person who is supposed to hold the rules of the organization can get swayed by an audience or a fighter or even an audience uh, that has a different opinion. So uh, my question for that is, uh, how much influence do you see uh, MM the MMA audience uh, or yeah, uh, audience members, pe viewership influencing um, the rule set? It seems like, I mean, a lot of times if they all start really booing when somebody's on top, the ref does stand them up. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be like that because, for one, most of the time the fans don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. And, I mean, when you're in the crowd and you're there, most of them are probably drunk as hell, mm -hmm. just hoping to see some good knockouts. But another thing is it really depends on who the fighter is. Like, if Habib's laying on top of Connor and the crowd loves Connor, they're going to be booing. Mm -hmm. But if Connor was on top of Habib, like, doing damage do you think the crowd's gonna be booing no no right so i mean it just depends like the ref just needs to do what he thinks is right and not care what the crowd says mm -hmm. and it's kind of like that in all sports i mean in wrestling refs are decisions are deterred by the crowd yelling stalling or locking hands or anything crazy like mm -hmm. it, i mean it really depends yeah. on the crowd any sport really home court advantage home field advantage mm -hmm. like refs are always swayed by the refs, and that's just a reality of sports but mm -hmm. it shouldn't be like that they should just call it how they see it and how they think they should call it yeah but we we definitely see uh some fights getting affected by the fans with the refs listening to him i think it was a uh, was it the maya woodley fight i might be where maya was like working towards getting into a uh, position maya was, usman maya usman is that what it was yeah, yeah he had usman's back yeah, and they stood it up. Right. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's very yeah, and that's very interesting. Yeah, and that can yeah, and that can be from person to person where they might yeah, there's a a level of respect with a certain uh, martial art where they would uh, I guess entertain the I guess the rules of engagement or with um with whatever the fighter is doing, but and that but that depends on where um, who who's uh, facilitating and who, uh, where the where the arena is yeah and that's where those um those clashes are um and as you see and as you see it like evolving or like as you see it like going on from year to year um do you see the one uh, one side tipping over uh over another or do you see it bouncing out or do you th I think that there's they'll, they'll refer everybody as tug of war versus uh with um uh a certain rule, a certain rule set being uh, entertained or being uh, treasured over, I guess, this uh, universal, uh, this universal code where pe everyone can get a chance. Um, I don't really understand what you're asking. Sorry. I know. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't either. Oh yeah, I, I apologize. It's just um, <laughs> uh, it's just about, it's just about knowing. Uh, yeah, it's been acknowledging um, where the, um, the culture comes from, where um, where um, the people come from, the the experiences that they had of seeing uh, seeing fights from other from other sports, uh, from other um, areas of combat, and then now to see MMA like combine them all together, that's where um, this clash comes from, and you'll mm -hmm. you'll expect these kinds of uh, these um, rules rule clashes. So will this have like a a point where it uh, all flattens out and everyone will get over. Oh, we should fight like this. We should fight like that. Or do you think it'll be um, like a perpetual uh, uh, conflict going on? Uh, I mean, I don't think much is going to change. Like the rules aren't going to change. And I think everybody's just going to have to, I mean, everybody pretty much knows how to do everything at this point, And they understand that they have to 
learn how to stop a takedown if they don't want to wrestle or learn how to wrestle at least. Um, mm -hmm. I think the the only rule changes they I mean they might mess around with the knees to the grounded opponent eventually. I mean there's a little disagreement on that. Um, and the only thing I think that really matters that needs to change with this is uh, judging, because um, I because I mean I think that's the part where there might be some bias mm -hmm. by the judges uh depending on what they see if they're more boxing oriented which most of them are um that's the only part that i think will eventually change and i think for the best mm, i see i see yeah uh yeah and i haven't gotten to the judges yeah and that's what uh, Joe Rogan was talking about having like a op something called open judging where you would have uh a panel of judges uh, chiming in, see uh, which areas of the fight that they have an expert opinion on uh, would have it in favor of one fight, fighter over another. I think maybe um, with uh, maybe with this, uh, yeah, what well, maybe with this, this would um, address some of the ambiguity of it all. But even in uh, uh, with judging, there there would have this unspoken rules or gentleman rules of engagement. I mean. Even uh, with referees, yeah, Mario Yamasaki was kind of a uh, was kind of uh, infamous for having uh, the fighters being warriors, and I wonder yeah. if that's going to be uh, influential with uh, judges as well. Even if you have this open judging, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think we just need to get more well-rounded judges uh, that have a little more experience in MMA and seem to know what they're talking about more. Mm -hmm. I think to be a judge, you should have had to be a pro fighter. Hmm. You don't. Wait, you don't have to be a pro fighter. No, I think you should. You oh, don't have to, but I think you should. Mm. If you want to be a judge, at least at the level of the UFC, mm -hmm. which I know it's not like that. They do it by commission. Like the same judges judging UFC fights are the same ones judging boxing, which I know was a problem with like Adeline Bird and she did it. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're going to be judging a UFC card or even Bellator, really anything like that, you should have had to be a professional MMA fighter. Because mm -hmm. like, there's no reason someone like Adam Bird should be judging Canelo Triple G, and then the next week coming and judging a fight like Usman Colby Covington, where it's two completely different sports and completely different things happening, and these judges have no idea. Like these judges don't even know what a Kamora is or know what's happening on the ground or understand the clinch. Like, so they're just going off what they think is like, like we said, like a street fight. Like they don't know what they're judging at all. Mm -hmm. They're judging like a street fight, damn near. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's never going to get fixed unless they get actual experienced people in there. Okay. I don't think you necessarily have to be a professional MMA fighter, but uh, I think there needs to be, there definitely needs to be some changes. Mm -hmm. Or at least if you mess up, you should be held accountable, which they're not. Yeah. Like, if you really screw up a decision, you should get suspended or something. Mm. So, oh, that would mean that... Uh, UFC would have their own judges, and I think there might be a little bit of, yeah, I think um, along with the confirmation bias well, that comes with the risk of having uh, like uh, people who have fought uh, in MMA, you would also have, if uh, the UFC would be facilitating suspensions, there is even more confirmation bias because it's up to the the guy upstairs uh, to see which judges um, get to have a say in a certain fights. Yeah, or or have more judges, more mm -hmm. than three. Have five judges. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. The odds of them all five screwing it up is less. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, do you think a third party think a third might party uh might, might even might. though it might uh add to what we were talking about um as a problem or, or just something that is observable in the fighting world? Do you think having something from a third party might balance um balance judging? Because, yeah. I think if it's done right, having a third party could be good. Because from my understanding, and I know this is how it used to be, the judges at the cage judging the fight don't get like monitors or anything. Like they're watching through the cage. Mm -hmm. And I think if they had somebody like upstairs in a booth watching on a computer, mm -hmm. whether that person gets to judge the fight or they can ask that person questions, like mm -hmm. things that they missed, yeah. then I think that could help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I know that in the, I think it was a Houston fight, that even though there were... Uh, monitors that the judges could uh, look to f uh, look at the fight through. They uh, some of them weren't even looking at it. I think it was one judge that wasn't even looking at the screen because 
Uh, oh yeah, it was only boxing judges that were judging the MMA fight. It was the the Dominic Reyes versus John Jones fight. That's how it usually is. Uh, yeah, because it's from the commission. Uh, mm. uh, but there, I think there's some that uh, that uh, that know how to score know how to score MMA fights as opposed to just uh, strictly boxing. I think it was just a that was a special um, occurrence. I would hope. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I mean, obviously, some are better than others. Yeah, but... yeah. So yeah, that's where oh, yeah, the that's where it comes from. So, uh, so, I think yeah, that was like the big question. Um, just as a final question, uh, I guess maybe as a personal thing, what are some un? Uh, you specified them, uh, I think, in the in the in the early minutes of the podcast, but what are some of the uh, early, uh, unspoken rules or like rules of engagement or something called a judgment gentleman's code that you like and dislike, like something like guilty pleasures. Hmm. Um, like, I mean, like we said, you need to always be ready, but I think it is better to not be an asshole um, yeah. and hit somebody when their mouthpiece is out and they're trying to stop the fight, but also keep your mouthpiece in, I guess, and be ready. Um, I think, uh, I guess an unspoken rule that I like is uh, when the fight's over, it's over. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, yeah. you got it all out. No matter, well, depending on what it is. I, I think the Khabib and Connor thing, that got it too far and it's too much to be repaired. Mm -hmm. But, like, for the most part, if you guys were talking shit before the fight, you fought it out, you know, shake hands and mm -hmm. be over it. See, I disagree with that. It depends on what it is. <laughs> if it goes too far, but, like, if if you guys just had a little disagreement, like when it's over, shake hands and mm -hmm. be cool. But uh, yeah, if you're if it's going past a certain line, then you can't really <laughs> <laughs> can't really make up after. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I like like shaking the coach's hands and all that after that because I'm in wrestling. That's kind of an unspoken rule too. Not everybody does it, but I'd say ninety to ninety five percent of people like after matches go shake the coach's hands. I think that's good for MMA too, like showing a sign of respect. But when it comes like the trash talking and bad blood, like, I don't know. I kind of feel like if it's real and it wasn't just for promotion, then you're not really going to show a bunch of love after it. But you don't have to be like an asshole. Like you can just be done with the fight, get your hand raised, go opposite ways and be done with it. But I don't know about like guys getting heated arguments like Connor and Diaz, like talking bad about each other and their teammates and throwing stuff at each other and then giving each other hugs after the fight. Right. Like, that's kind of lame, I think. Yeah. I mean, Maybe like shaking one. up real fast and being done, but like, hugging each other and like rubbing each other's heads. I think that's kind of lame. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see. Um, my, mine is, it's like something that is, that should be criticized, but it's also guilty pleasure. It's kind of like the primal element of, of unspoken rules where, they, uh, where the fighter likes to engage in like dirty boxing, where they get really scruffy about it. Yeah, they, where they throw like the intricate and clean uh, style of fighting that you see in, I don't know, Taekwondo or anything like that, and just go like, just go go balls to the wall with just oh, scrapes, knees, elbows, just trying to like cut the person as much as possible. And the reason why I like to criticize it be is because it can be taken to certain extremes. Like Li Zhang Lang, I think he was like, he was clearly caught eye gouging a person when he was in the bottom and the person was on top. His nails were on the, it wasn't like really near the eye, it was like an inch or so below it. And he was like scraping down on him just to get him off of him. And I think that's where it can, uh, it can go into the, to the extreme, which is why uh, it's advisable not to really go there. And that's why um, you see people, and that's why you see like not a lot in those, and I guess in, in civilized cultures where you don't see a lot of people like scratching or eye gouging or biting or anything like that. But uh, sometimes it can trickle down into a professional sports where uh, people might might not be checked on that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely shouldn't be doing that in the UFC. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't like eye gouging. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, um, but hey, I mean, if you're out in the street and somebody's trying to kill you, do whatever you got to do. I'll kick yeah. somebody in the nuts yeah. if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much goes over um, all of the areas that I wanted to go, and and I 
I'd be more than happy to um, go on through this topic in the future because I see this is going to be uh, a constant debate of what um what should be or not be accepted uh, amongst fighters. So, yeah, I'll be looking yeah, forward to this uh, kind of discussion. Yeah, cool. Thanks for having us on. Uh, let us know if you ever want to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys um, very much. Oh, if you want to um, follow these guys, follow them at uh, the Sibling Rivalry Podcast. Uh, uh, what are your uh, Twitter handles, your social media stuff? Well, sibling Rivalry Podcast is actually different than ours. Um, so you'll, you'll be like shocked. Uh, ours is the Sibling Rivalry MMA Podcast. The MMA part is a very important distinction because mm. the Sibling Rivalry Podcast is very different than ours. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, uh, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah so uh, our twitter is uh at rivalry mma yep okay all right yep and we're on youtube apple spotify stitcher pretty much everything uh we, we haven't posted anything at, well we might have last week yeah we post a lot we just haven't this week but we probably because yeah, there's no fights for such a long time now it sucks yeah uh, so yeah. We'll, we'll get something going though oh yeah <laughs> same all right. Well, guys, thank you very much for coming on and uh, like me with uh, everything that you had to say. Um, glad to uh, do it again sometime. For sure. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Yep. Stay safe. You too.